So this video is about color tools available to us um, as interior decorators and what we can use them and how we can use them. This first one is a color wheel with some additional functions. Um, I mean, we've made a color wheel with the 12 hues. But this color wheel allows us to see the results of what happens if we add another hue to a color or if we mix the hue with white or black but on reverse we have the color harmony so it's a pretty handy tool it's got like three three different wheels joined together you can purchase them at art supply shops or probably online so this side um, you can move along and you can see how the hue looks if you add primary colours or white or black to a hue. As I said before, the second, the reverse side will show you colour relationships or colour schemes. So let's take yellow and violet which form a complementary colour here, a complementary um, harmony. You have split complementary harmony, so the two hues on both sides of the violet are part of this harmony, and yellow. We also have the triadic relationship and tetradic relationship between hues. We can move this wheel. We also see of what a hue looks like if we add white, grey or black to a hue. Later on we will be mixing tint, tones and shades um, as part of our course. But you can see that here now of what the um, results are. And you can use tints, tones or shades in the colour scheme, not just the colour in its pure chroma or pure saturation. So that's a pretty handy tool. Um, as interior decorators we use colour Fendex. So we are definitely part of the colour industry and these are developed by paint companies. They have a name and some of them also have uh, a number. So companies do invest in creating colour tools, colour fendex for interior designers. Dulux being one of the most um, prominent company, paint company on the, on the market. And as interior decorators, we do work with, with, with paints and the paint industry. So this is a pretty handy tool. Um, the Fendec is divided in sections and different paints companies um, create, you know, different divisions. Um, often they will separate the hues into what they call whites and naturals. Um, and then they have a hue spectrum. So basically a pure hue and then gradation of a hue, extension of a hue. Um, so I think this hue also has um, a sheen level chart which will show you how the actual colour will be affected by a sheen level, by paint, sheen level in the paint. And then we have the whites. And so-called the naturals, which are like beiges and fawny colours and greys, light greys. More complex kind of chromatic uh, colours in the naturals. Neutrals and the greys here. So what's in the neutrals? Okay, so in the neutrals we have colours that fall kind of in the middle. They're not too cool um, and not too warm. 
in the naturals we have mostly kind of beiges and chromatic um, greys and in the greys here we have a variety of greys mixed with white and black as well as some added um, hues so we've got greys leading towards green and blue and purple and the hue spectrum chart which is the majority of the chart basically has the hues in pure saturation as well as the extension of hues so tints shades and tones of the hue in the middle of the chart we have the bolds and brights so hues pretty much in the hue um in the pure your saturation okay so that's the dulux chart um, okay so at the back also of the index so you might have heard of some maybe names of the colors some of the colors become pretty popular and um, you can check the index to find the color on the page so you have pages page numbers Colors have names and codes, and you can specify this to a client oh, on the chart, like a specification schedule. So when you're specifying colors for paint and for interior or exterior, you will select a color. So you will select a hue, the name of a hue, the company name, the code number, as well as the type of paint that you're selecting, including the sheen level. I would suggest that you get your own um, like a Dulux chart or another paint company chart pretty good investment. Um, I'll show you a few other charts. Um, oh, before I go to other charts, um, if you do not have a fan deck, like a complete Dulux fan deck, for example, a good idea is to just grab a selection of free color samples. What I often like to have is the um, selection of off-whites and neutrals. And I usually like to have a few sets of those. So if I go to um, a client's house, I can um, use you know, a larger sample than what's in the Fendex and I can um, put them against a wall, examine them, how they look in that particular space uh, under those different light conditions. And um, I can pretty much determine what whites I would like to use, whether I want to use something warmer, cooler, more neutral, or a deeper white, or something like that. So that's pretty handy to have. Resine also makes an excellent whites and neutrals colour chart. It gives you a good comparison, so you can compare a hue to hue, and that's the basic selection, and, I've got, and they have a lot more hues, but at least this gives you a good start. So often the neutrals and whites are divided into warm, kind of in between, and cool. And then here we also have these um, greys and charcoals included as well. So very much colours inspired by nature. Porter's chart is excellent and it's quite different to the other paint companies, which are printed colour, the Porter's chart actually has, is painted, it hand, hand painted with the actual paint. And that's pretty excellent because you can see the texture of the paint and how uh, the, the actual, the light is reflecting the colour and how the colour will appear um, more likely in the space. So it's a better, more accurate rendition of, of the colour. And again, we have um, 
a chart showing the different texture of the paint, the, the different shine levels, so you can actually feel this and see how one color can appear quite different differently depending on the texture or shine level. And uh, we start with the whites here in the chart, the very bright whites, warm whites at the beginning, going into creams and yellows and oranges, so going along the color spectrum, pinks, and then we're moving into purples. Kind of in the middle here we also have neutrals, so a bit more neutral colours here, like all sorts of pale, dusty colours here. More greys. Porters have a beautiful collection of, of neutrals and very lovely muted. Um, muted colours, so blues, and greens, and they don't, uh, they create the colour, put the colour chart differently, they really look at colour individually, um, there is no that exact gradation, um, so they just select the best colours from the gradation and they just arrange them in a chart um, of colours related to one another by a hue but it isn't um, so much a, a gradation or extension of hue. These colours are looked at as individual colours so they look at, look at them as individual quality of a colour. And towards the back, once you finish with the greys, we also have the cool greys. A selection there of cool, cool greys and blacks and charcoal. So that's a beautiful colour chart. These ones are a little bit expensive. Um, you can also buy the little leaflets individually. Uh, and that could also go onto your presentation colour boards, mood boards. But they, they're really beautiful because they actually show the true paint colour. Another excellent investment into colour tools is um, a type of colour collection that shows more historical and traditional colours. Uh, particularly if you like working with older buildings, it's really good to, to, to know uh, the names of these traditional colours um, and, and the gradation of them and also how they were used. So this is a colour chart by Farrell and Bowl. They are uh, an English company. You can also get a bigger Fendic. At the back, of the chart, you have a little bit of information about each colour and explanation of how the colour has been historically used. So for example, number one, lime white, it's a neutral colour, it doesn't have a date, some colours have a historical date attached to them. Um, simply the colour of untinted brightest white lime wash or soft distemper. So let's find another colour, a colour called Bath. So this is also where the original colour and names for colours come from. Um, here, most close to its 19th century colour, good with Victorian red skins. So it gives you just a little bit of a hint of how the colour was used. Um, red colour called Radicchio. A cleaner, less aged version of number 43, eating room red. So it gives you an indication of how the, the colour was used. It was used in an eating room. Um, so that's a fantastic um, colour chart. Also has a um, bit of an explanation of different paint finishes too. 
some wads that were used for, some were used for um, ceilings, others for walls, and other types are used for timber, finishing timber. Another um, tool that you can have in your colour toolbox is um, some kind of folder you can just have um, um, just Ziploc bags. If you if you use particularly um, matching colours or working with um, some colour records, old colour records, you can store some of this information for yourself. Um, and for the future for your client too. So I used to do a lot of colour matching um, in historical buildings. So I used to store these samples. So this is a sample from a woodwork and I would do a little scraping or if I find a little um, bit of paint that is peeling, I take that, adhere it and then I'll do a colour match. I find that colour somewhere, maybe first in a historical colour chart and then I will look into maybe Porter's chart or Aberdeen or Dulux chart as well. So here I've got some scrapings of um, an architrave and here I've got um, a little piece of wallpaper from Clarendon House and at the back I actually have attached to the wallpaper, wallpaper is the original colour which is like a you know, dusky pink colour. So I would match um, the new colour and the distemper in the appropriate historical paint into this scraping. This is another colour matched to the original um, from the Clarendon house as well. So that's a green that I've matched. So I'm just keeping the record. I used to keep records of the original and I would match that into a paint and then also create a new formula. So if they need some more of these paints, I have a formula ready. So storing records of your clients. Okay, so these are some of the color tools that you might need in the future in your work.